Hi everyone, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and today I'm sharing with you a botany lesson. The lesson is originally inspired by this botany main lesson block by Live Education. This is a Waldorf curriculum and we just finished our lesson on conifers and I didn't see a lesson on broadleaf trees or deciduous trees and so I'm going to include one lesson before we move on to other lesson content. The previous lesson on conifers talked about drawing these silhouettes that show the gesture of the tree and I really like that idea so I want to do that again with deciduous trees. So I have a couple of resources here that I'm going to share with you but I want to show you the inspiration for this lesson it comes from this book called The ABCs of Nature. Well it originally comes from the Waldorf curriculum but I wanted to copy this illustration into our main lesson book to show the silhouettes of these trees as well as what they look like when they don't have leaves. Then we went on a nature walk kind of recently and I picked up this sample of interior live oak and the acorns and I decided that instead of doing trees that are not local to our area that we would choose local trees and do this project. So I have this book here which is a pocket field guide and it's for the area that we live in and from this I got a couple of trees that we want to do images of in our main lesson book. Our main lesson book is from a child's dream. These measure nine and a half inches by 12 and a half inches and all of the pages are blank pages and they have onion skin that separates each page which does protect your artwork. I usually end up taking these out and if you want to do the same I recommend that you take them out when you're done doing all of your lessons because I did not do that and instead as you continue with your book and you write you can see that it leaves an imprint on your previous work especially if you're using a variety of art mediums. In this case we're using some chalk pastels and then earlier on in our main lesson book and for our lessons we used colored pencils and that transfers less so than the chalk and when we use chalk we also spray our pages so that it doesn't um, leave that much of a residue hardly any at all and if this was fresh that would completely smear so we're going to be doing a two-page spread to show the gestures of these trees the silhouettes of these trees that are local to where we live in Southern California. This previous lesson is also on broadleaf and deciduous trees, but we are using um, the book called Botanicum, or we used the book called Botanicum in order to get some art inspiration for this lesson. And this is a really beautiful book that we've used multiple times for our botany lessons. And the image that we used was this one right here, temperate trees, and you can see all of these beautiful illustrations. And that was the inspiration for this lesson. But now we're going to be moving on to do the gestures of the trees. And for that lesson, we have a couple of resources that I wanna share with you. The first one is called Trees and Shrubs. And while I really love the way this book is written, it is not local for us. If you are in the UK or in London, uh, England in particular, then this book would be brilliant for you. It's also a little bit dated, so you have to just take into consideration the way that it's written, uh, which was over a hundred years ago. So uh, if you can get through some of those cultural uh, differences, then I think that this book would be a really great resource. And then again, it would be great if it had, or if you lived in the area, because for instance, we're going to be doing oak tree, but this is an oak that's not indigenous to our area. And so this wouldn't be as relevant for us compared to other uh, trees that we want to study. Another book that we find really handy is Nature Anatomy. I went ahead and I wrote down the four trees that we want to do that are local to our area. And there are different kinds of oaks and willows and sycamores, etc. And so for the oak trees, we're going to be doing the coastal live oak and interior live oak. And so the live oaks are the ones that are in our area. What I liked about this book also is that it gave the tree shapes. And this is especially helpful in again the gesture of the tree and this was part of our 
Waldorf lesson is that it talked specifically about that. Then you can also see the anatomy of a deciduous tree. And this is a really great image that I wanted to include with our illustrations. However, since we're going to be doing the interior live oak, it is an evergreen oak, unlike other oak trees. And so instead of doing it in, in this way where you're seeing both sides of it, where ours is just gonna be completely green with its crown because that's the way that you're, you'll find it in our area. This book also shows the different the different leaf uh, leaf shapes, and that's another thing that it's great to compare that. And so you can find a lot of art inspiration in this book, and you can also find information. But I don't find it to be the best resource for an information enough to put together a main lesson. So this is uh, just want to show you a couple more of the pages in here that would be helpful for this lesson. And then the last book we have is the DKI Witness book on tree. And I have mixed feelings about these books as far as how we've used them in our homeschool setting, but I do still have at least a dozen titles. And this is one that has come in really handy. Again, you can see the different leaf shapes here on this page, but what's nice about this book as opposed to nature anatomy is that this one has images like f photos versus this one is entirely illustrated. I prefer the illustrated pictures because that way it's easier for me to use this as art inspiration to put into our main lesson book versus images that are photographs. I find this sometimes more challenging to transfer it into a drawing since that's not my forte and so finding an image that I can copy that's already illustrated is a little bit easier for me. So I've marked a couple of pages that we're going to be using in this book but primarily I'm going to be using some images I found online as well as information from our nature book that's local as well as some information online very specifically about the trees that we can find in our county. For today's lesson, I'm going to use my Sargent Art Square Chalk Pastels. These are also the pastels that we use on our chalkboard and they work really well in our main lesson book. The only thing is that you want to make sure that you use a, max fix, a matte fixative when you are done doing your illustration so that you can set it. And then we also have these chalk pencils and they are by generals and they're pastel chalk pencils and they give like a very nice point but they're not as blendable as the chalk pastels we're placing this lesson right after conifer trees but actually it belongs at the very end of this main lesson block after we talk about monocots and dicots and flowering plants and trees but i went ahead and i put it here instead so that it could complement our conifers lesson and we could see the different the difference in the gesture that these trees make from a silhouette perspective and because it also gave some relevance to where we live and so i've added this one here even though when I look at the whole trajectory of the main lesson block and where these different lessons are supposed to go, I realize that it's much better at the end after the introduction of monocots and dicots and bulbs, lilies, and flowers, and then we can talk about the flowering trees and root vegetables and everything else. This one would probably be better at the end. So I'm using my chalk pastels and I decided to go right in the center of the page for this oak tree. This is an evergreen oak tree rather than a deciduous oak tree because those are the kinds of varieties that we have where we live in Southern California. So I wanted something that was significant for where we are. And I definitely wanted to give scale for this illustration. And so I did a little tire swing with a little child inside the tire swing just so that you get some idea of the enormity of these trees. It's also very interesting to find out the history of these trees and what kinds of environmental conditions prevent their growth versus enhance their growth. And so where we live, there are a lot of mature and over mature trees and then young seedlings, but not a lot in between. So you can see here that none of the chalk rubs off on my fingers and that is because I've used a matte fixative in order to protect it. You can find the details of all of the products that I use on the blog post that accompanies this video. And once I was done, I realized that the tree looked too soft and wispy and it needed some more texture because 
oak trees, the ones that are around here, their leaves are more leathery and textured and even a little bit spiky. And so I'm using my Lyra color pencils in order to add some texture over the chalk drawing. And this is possible because I've already added that spray fixative and it's completely sealed it and made the texture almost a little bit rough. And so when I use my color pencils on top of it, I get a really great dimensional look and I really love the way that it turned out. Of course, I added all of the written work around the tree afterwards, and this becomes the content for me to deliver the lessons. And then my daughter can either copy the written work or she can do her own original narrations once she's done with her illustration. I hope you enjoyed this look at our Waldorf main lesson for trees, specifically oak trees. Don't forget to check out the blog post that accompanies this video for more information as well as links to all of the resources that we have used throughout our botany lessons. You can find that link down in the description box below. And if you'd like to see how we're homeschooling on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.